I'm your host, Julie Fafan Balzer for Make It Artsy. You, the maker and crafter, can transform the ordinary into something very extraordinary. All you need is the right tool and material and a little inspiration from Joe Rotella. He's revamping a plain lamp into beautiful decor. And I have to tell you, I fell in love with this lamp when I saw it. It's amazing. Are you a Whovian? I, well, I have to say, I, I, I may have binge watched some Doctor Who and gotten uh. attached. So that started as a plain lamp pole, and then we transformed it with foam, chipboard, and paint, basic art supplies. It's so cool, and I and I actually, I thought it was wood when I walked up to it, and then of course I touched it, and it's light. It's quite light, it's kind of cool. And you have so many other things that you've sort of magically transformed. Will you take us through? I will, so we started over there. That's phenolic foam that comes in all kinds of different shapes. It's easy to cut, and it paints just like wood. So we glued pieces together to make a clock and to make that little face, the little holder with test tubes in it. I think this is such a clever idea for flowers and I like how you have like the seashell collection. You could do almost a whole memory scape, yeah, do you know cool. what I mean, of what you're doing. And the boxes I think are the neat. The boxes, this was a cigar box, plain cigar box, and with a stencil and some gilding and mica we transformed it into a box that would hold your remote controls. And I don't throw anything away because I'm a craft hoarder. So this was a stationary box, just a little notepad box, and it one just like it transformed it into an African frog. That's so cool. Ties frame, so many good ideas. I can't wait to make our own lamp. I'm ready. Here we go. We are going to make a variation, right, of that lamp, and it's this adorable little multicolored decoupage butterfly garden thing that's happening over here. True, true. Okay. Now, normally when I look for something to transform, I want to be sure that I can take it apart so that I can do something to it. The problem with this particular lamp fixture is it doesn't come apart. So, I can see that the cord is still very much attached there. So you look at it and think, how am I going to do something to it? Well, phenolic foam is perfect because I can wrap some on either side. So let's go ahead and start with that. I'm just going to take a piece of foam and find the center line. I like using a square because you know I'm into the tools thing. So I just have to mark it. Well, a square is so great because you get a straight line every single time because obviously you're lining up the bottom in order to get that. And this is so soft, I can carve it with just a spoon. I was gonna say, I noticed spoon. you actually, it wasn't a pen you were marking it with, you are actually marking it with a paper piercer. Yeah, and look how easy I can make a, that's a pretty, tunnel. That's pretty a cool. tunnel, a tunnel for me to put that pipe in. How good is that? So we could do this with both pieces and we're all done there and you're gonna end up with something like that. Cool, now, and that's how you're gonna get that lamp base in there. Exactly, now don't worry about the top, because you know that I didn't do a great job on the top. Mm -hmm. I used an electronic cutting machine to cut a piece of chipboard that exactly fits, and who doesn't want an excuse to use digital calipers so I could measure the pole on the lamp, put that in the cutting well, machine, and I and also, I, I wanna point out too here, right there, you can see that you've slit this, and that's how you're actually gonna slide it carefully exactly. around. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So we would put this on either mm -hmm. side of of the lamp, and then I'm just using a double-sided adhesive tape. This one I love because I don't need any kind of holder for it. I've got the perfect holder built right into my hand. So when I put that <laughs> tape on there, now I would put this around the pole, obviously, stick right. it together, and if it's not perfect, it sands beautifully. Cool. So let's work on some smaller pieces just so we have some room on the tabletop. This is the same material, phenolic foam. Now I want to point out that one of the things we're doing is we're working on a tabletop with a single piece just so that it's easy for people to see, but normally I know you have this lazy Susan here, and that's how you would sort of access your project as exactly, you were working. Exactly, exactly, and, and I wouldn't put that foam all the way to the base, put a sheet of stiff wax paper on it, but then I can turn it, and when I'm all done, just pull the paper out and I don't get the base dirty. Perfect. So we start with this phenolic foam. Now I know I'm going to collage on it some very, very fine materials, napkins. And anytime you collage, the rule is that whatever you're putting on, the base color should be the same color or lighter. And just look at the difference when I put this over something light versus something dark. Oh yeah, dark. it's so different because of course that the napkin's so thin it's showing through and when you wet it, it's gonna show through even exactly, more. Exactly, exactly. So all we do is take this base and this paints just like wood. I've got gesso here. Gesso's great for knocking down a base right. color. Right, for people who aren't familiar with gesso, it's just a primer, the same kind of thing that you would prime your walls with or anything like that, meaning that it, it just gives a base gripping layer. So perfect for those frames we showed earlier. So, I could just work on yeah, those. Easy. So now I have a piece that's all done. Let's talk about working with a napkin. Most napkins in the U.S. are three or four plies. We only want the very topmost ply. So here's a tip. Take a little piece of masking tape, a place that you don't care about, like that logo, 
put it on here and here and pull, one ply's gone. I've, I've never seen a napkin come apart so easily. I'm usually there with my fingernail desperately trying to get under that layer. There you go. And I, I, I know I'm terrible, but I save these because I can collage these to make texture. Yeah, and not only that, but I was going to say this napkin even happens to have a little extra pattern on it underneath in the How second cool layer, is which is pretty cool. Now, I never cut my images with scissors because you're going to get a very harsh line. Instead, water cut it. Just take a detailed brush, dip it in a little water, go around the image that you want, and you'll water see cutting. where cutting, that's a great way of putting it. I've never heard of that. People usually call it, call it tearing or something like that, but water cutting is a great way to think about it in terms of you can actually be surprisingly precise. I mean, you are managing to get right around that butterfly with that nice, soft deckle exactly, edge. Exactly, exactly, and I like that deckle edge. So now let's take this, and this has already been gessoed. I've got one here. Typically, I wouldn't collage with any pieces bigger than maybe a 50 cent piece. I have this one massive piece. Why, why is that? I think it's hard to get the wrinkles out, especially something as fine as a napkin. Um, but the advantage I have here is I have a really nice acrylic medium that is actually silky smooth. So it's not aggressive enough that it'll tear the napkin. And what we want to do is put a layer of it on the base, or what artists call the substrate. And you know, another benefit, of course, of having gessoed that is it's gonna absorb less of your acrylic medium so that you're actually using less of that product, which is great. And then we're gonna just lay this down. And if it's a small piece, I always say, you wanna start from the center and work your way out, just like you would if you were rolling a pie crust. And you know what I like is you're not worrying at all about the fact that it was a napkin and it was folded, it has a crease in it, because as soon as you start to glue it, that's gonna come right out. And you know, I've got some little creases in here. To me, that doesn't like bother me. I like the creases. Me. I think that it adds, adds texture, texture and interest. And because the material is so fine, I can start layering things on, and it's just gonna blend no oh, worries at all. Oh, you know what? All. It actually looks like that flower now is coming right out of there. It doesn't even yeah. look like it's a separate piece. That's cool. And even if we put our butterfly down, but the key is to make sure you have a sandwich here, medium on the bottom, tissue on the top, cool. medium on the top. So I'm gonna steal I've that got from one you. all done now. Thank you. And I've got a piece that's already been collaged. And if we want to brighten that up, I'm working on a piece of very thick, stiff wax paper. And I know you have one that's actually already done, that Painted. already has the paint on it. And if you can hold it up so we can see the differences, that the would difference. be great. I think the thing, the place where I really see it is right here with the green paint versus here, it's a little oh. plainer. And don't worry about being, I can't draw, I can't paint. This is like paint by numbers. I'm just laying it on top of places I already see the green. Because this paint has a little bit of transparency, to it, it's still going to show whatever's underneath. Cool. And yet it really brightens up that whole piece. I love that idea. What's next? What's next is I wanted to add some gilded butterflies. Yay, shiny! Shiny. So what I have is a double-sided adhesive paper, and I've drawn butterflies on it, and all we have to do is lift off the top layer. And I think this is such a cool idea, and you could easily do this with so many different and shapes that you, you like. If you hand me the gilding, that little box, I keep that gilding in that big box for a couple reasons. It's very deep. Mm -hmm. Never use this with a ceiling fan, a cat. Don't sneeze. It's so thin. All we do is apply it onto the double-sided adhesive. And then the reason I like that big container, if you open it back up again, yep. I can burnish, and burnish is a cool verb. It means to apply and remove at the same time. So when I'm done, I close up the lid, I've saved all that good goodness, and now I have a gilded butterfly. It's so beautiful, I love it, and it even has a little bit of extra texture. And if we look back at the finished lamp, which I think is absolutely beautiful, we can see how it all comes together so that you have a floral garden with some shiny butterflies. It's just absolutely stunning, and you can, of course, suit it to fit whatever you would like.